Welcome along to the Make It Count podcast. My name is David. My name's Matt. And we are the Taylor Bros. And today we're just going to get going straight away. Um, no willy nilly. We're just going to go straight in. And what are you laughing at? And we're going to talk about hobbies. Now, absolutely. Got to have a hobby. We, well, interesting because turns out hobby, even just the word, is apparently quite for some people an anxiety inducing word um really? because it's broadly defined and when someone asks you what hobbies have you got some people feel very stressed about that so i was reading this whole article and he was like well i've just redefined hobbies to sort of mean anything you enjoy doing anything that is pleasurable so it's, it was it's just interesting to me that there'll be some people that like the word like hobby is a bit like a difficult word um whereas other people and and so there's just a lot of stuff so i thought it was an interesting way to start interesting place to start what do you think matt that i that is a new concept to me i had never thought that a hobby could be an anxiety inducing thought or word uh i can maybe see how in a well yeah we are in increasingly anxious in our mindset as a as a people as a culture and i think it's related to lots of things we've discussed in a sense there's so much coming at us we almost don't have a, a second to pause and now someone's telling me that in my free time i should be doing something you know and so it can i, I can see how it can feel maybe like another demand oh you should have a hobby you you know this is something you should be doing and perhaps also that might tie into this sort of side hustle culture of like you know everything you do has got to be producing for something and so your hobby is that you see so many things so many things on either on youtube or just articles or people on social media basically going i turned my hobby into a side hustle and now i'm making x this you know per month on it and it's kind of like ah you know how can i earn money doing all of these things and and so i can see how actually it would be an anxiety inducing thing that's not and how I think... i've seen it yeah. But, you know, I can see how that would be the case. And I think it's anxiety producing in the conversation, partly because, and this is some of the other articles I read, is that if you ask people, what hobbies do you have? They're probably mm. going to say, I don't have any. Right. <laughs> um, and so that's quite like, well, maybe I should have hobbies. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is a hobby? And so these sort of things put you, whereas if I said, what do you do in your free time? That's a bit more, or what do you do, you know, to have fun? That's an easier question. And hobby seems to have a little bit more weight about it and so i just thought it was interesting what do you think a hobby is matt <laughs> so interesting to think that hobby has a bit more of a weight to it because i suppose like the the word hobbyist to me seems like a very um free fun airy, but yeah it's just kind of a a bit of a laissez-faire kind of oh, it's not really serious you know it's just a bit of a hobbyist sort of thing but yeah it's it i suppose if you are if you do have a hobby there is a, a measure of intention and consistency that perhaps we don't all feel like we want to apply in our out of work time where I just it's too much to do anything else I just want to kind of relax and do whatever to make yeah. you know I suppose we've talked about this before the, the the what is it the the way that we talked about the the national plan or the national um pastime at the moment is to cancel plans and watch netflix yeah. and so maybe you could say our national hobby is netflix you know we basically or we just degrade to the lowest one because it doesn't require anything of us yeah so one thing i saw define it as and it was interesting what you said but it was this idea of regular activity for enjoyment yeah um, so that's sort of quite encompassing and so yeah. but the idea of regularity that was one thing that was interesting to me um that that made it a hobby obviously for enjoyment i think we both are like in agreement it should be something you enjoy if it's not you're doing it wrong maybe but don't feel the pressure to do it right obviously uh, <laughs> but i suppose the bit that hinges for me which maybe makes this a more interesting conversation is what we understand by activity because anything you could do you know people like you said regularly watch tv and would say they find that enjoyable you know scroll social media and say they find that enjoyable are we saying that hey that is an activity or are we not saying that is an activity but that's interesting to me yeah i mean something that i do with great regularity 
and in, for enjoyment as well as sustenance is eating food. I'm not sure that would be called a hobby. I don't think that eating is a hobby. I'm sure there are people that be, you know, food is my hobby, you know, whether it is cooking or whether it is literally sampling other great food. But I, for most of us, probably food isn't a hobby. It's something we do largely to survive, but there is enjoyment there as well. So, yeah, I like that question of what counts as an activity. Uh, but in a sense, if this takes me back to when I was at, studying sports and physical education at, at, at school and the the definition we couldn't even get past like in our first session what is a sport because you yeah. kind of go well yeah obviously i know what a sport but it's kind of well does chess count as a sport does darts count as a sport what about snooker you know because it's a level of physical exercise there's also got to be a governing body there's got to be competition and you kind of go well at what point do you cut off physical exercise because like moving a chess piece does not take very much you know energy so yeah yeah so and it gets exactly maybe it gets lost in trying to define it because yeah. again and one other thing i found was that some people would say travel is a hobby but as many people will push back equally as hard and go travel is not a hobby yeah <laughs> you know it's like oh so is that a hobby is it not i mean it's an activity don't know how regular it is for most of us and it is mostly enjoyable um hopefully <laughs> you'd hope so, so I think, well yeah exactly and i think partly uh maybe again we're not going to get to the answer of what is a hobby this is to, to lead us in but as with all things that there is going to be an element of there's some gray area here you know and for one person gardening might be a really nice hobby for someone else that's their job so it's not necessarily going to be a hobby for enjoyment that's what they do to get paid and so the same activity can be a hobby or not depending on who you are in your context and i suppose my this is where i put my sort of intuitions out there you can push back as much as you like but i feel like a hobby requires some sort of skill <laughs> or like skill, yeah. it's it's an activity that you are doing uh, so that's why I probably wouldn't classify watching a film or scrolling on social media as that, because actually I think that's a passive thing, not an active mm. thing. And if the de definition is an activity, mm. it requires some sort of activity to it. Um, mm. And then, I, you know, I came across a bunch of articles as well, bemoaning the lost skills of the next generation, you know, of all these hobbies dying out, some that are, Maybe, maybe I'll say quaint for a want of a better word, you know, like train spotting and, and things like that. But other ones were more interesting. And so things like making preserves and jams and, and things like that, that these, these hobbies or skills that people of previous generations had and yeah. have and found enjoyment and uh, relaxation even in, but the next generation hasn't. And and so I suppose that was interesting. And I wonder, do you think it's true to suggest that maybe the younger generations don't have as many hobbies? Because I think that seems to be, or have hobbies as much, that seems to be a bit of a perception. This is really... Uh, mm, I don't want to make any grand sweeping uh, statements, <laughs> but I, I do wise. think that some of the trends that we are seeing, and I'm definitely picking up on some of the... Uh, just what I've been learning from Tim Almore and Likewise, where they're looking at what are the trends that we're seeing in these generations is more and more the interactions between people are digital and are mediated. Yeah, you know, it's literally like, you know, what is media? It is something in between, you know, so you've got and so they're mediated through the digital space. And I think lots of hobbies, obviously before the internet, they had to be, but lots of hobbies were almost facilitators of connections between people and you you're doing it's a shared enjoyment but there's also mm. that social aspect of it and uh i think that what we are potentially at risk of is the, one of the things that the younger generation just as a core basic skill aren't necessarily getting as much of is as they're growing up that face-to-face -face time with strangers with with well even just with friends uh, and with people in a wider community so those skills those social skills of how do you interact with someone that you don't know in a group 
aren't getting trained up and so therefore there might be even an increased anxiety on top of what we were talking about earlier and so it just feels like this great pressure and so I, it would be interesting to know whether and because i'm sure you know one of the great gifts of the internet is that if you do have an interest you can find a corner of the internet where that interest you go to the you know you can go to the nth degree on it because there's some they're all the nerds that's the nerds for that section well and and uh, there was somebody who i've done a little bit of work with um not in a coaching situation but they do they also have like a craft shop that they make crafts and do things i can't remember exactly what it is i think it's prints and cards and things like that and regularly like <laughs> several times they've told me about how they're part of this amazing online group some of whom they'll never meet but it's really encouraging they have all like do the same sort of things and they yeah. can help people forward with that so like you said there are these places it can be you can find the people that have same interests that are like-minded that um and there is a positive aspect to that that encourages yeah her in this situation to do more of that to go out to not feel so alone on that journey of her side hustle her hobby her fun enjoyment activity yeah and i think that's that's going to be an interesting dynamic moving forward isn't it probably the things that will well not hobbies that people take up are probably going to be helped by those online spaces the facilitation is there a good facilitation there? Is it where you can get some of that connection? I think it would be beautiful if you can get this hybrid, you know, so you can do, yeah, there's the online space, but there's also the interaction with in-person. Uh, but I think that that's a massive, almost undercurrent in whether the younger generation are going to take up hobbies or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there will be some that will die out is that a problem i don't know uh yeah like i think is stamp, it's is stamp collection going to be a thing in 15 yeah. years time maybe maybe you become even more niche but it doesn't seem like well even that to me i'm not even sure that is a hobby per se like what's the skill of collecting stamps like i don't know but i can see there's a completionist element to it where it's like oh i want to get all of these types of stamps or whatever yeah. um but yeah, well, this is again where I suppose you've added the the element of skill to yeah. activity definition, and and so I think a wider, you know, broader understanding of activity would be just anything you do for enjoyment. And I think that's one of the reasons why I spoke earlier. I said the wrong word. I said degrading. I meant defaulting. We're defaulting to your Netflix, and we're defaulting to social mm. media in those downtimes because it feels like it it doesn't require anything of this and it feels low energy. But of course, the sad thing about that is it doesn't actually feed you anything either. And so the the wonderful thing about a hobby, whether it is creative, like cooking or maybe gardening or some kind of, you know, knitting or whitt whittling or anything, or whether it is a collecting, you know, but there is it. There's something about, you know, you enter into a different mind space. You, every, all the all the noise disappears. You're, you're focusing only on this thing. And I, I wonder if that would be something that gets lost. It, you end up just going, what do you do for fun? I don't know. Uh, what did you do on the weekend? I don't, don't really know. What are you doing this weekend? Because I don't really have plans. And I think that would be my bigger concern is where people just don't have anything that interests them at all mm. and and don't really and it literally is at this point you have just handed over the keys to your life to the entertainment companies mm. you do just feed me whatever me. you want and i'll just receive it because i i've kind of got fatigue of making any intentional moves forward and i think that's maybe that sounds a little bit dire and a little bit harsh but that would be my fear that people just end up losing the ability to even go no this is something that i find enjoyment in so i'm going to apply a bit of effort and find <laughs> a group of people and find ways to make this happen mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's interesting recently me and my wife bought a piano i play a bit of piano and that's one of the things i would say i do as a hobby i'd come along and i just play a bit of piano uh sometimes i try and learn a piece but sometimes i'm just playing some pieces that i already know and it's a bit relaxing and it just helps me focus and unwind and my and and even somehow in the back of my head I can feel my like brain catching up with my body especially it's been like a really busy or a frantic day where 
actually i don't need more in i just need to be still but it allows it like mm. an intentional focus without necessarily being something that drains it's more of like a relaxation and an unwinding in a way yeah. that you know you talk to somebody after an hour of tv or a film you don't really quite get the same like you know when you watch a, a lord of the rings film and you've gone in for like three and a half hours or if the extended version there are four hours you stand up you're like oh that you know i, I feel dry, like you know exhausted in a way and yeah. and actually but you know 20 minutes on the piano and there's a, a refreshment there and so I think that's one of the things that you're talking about there is there's this unwinding, there's this relaxation. Hugely. Well, I've just been reminded of uh, a story that Tim Elmore tells in one of their episodes and saying, you know, when it comes to things like screen time, should we be, you know, mediating that? Should we be thinking about like restricting that in it? not like imposing on people but self-restriction, self-responsibility, self, you know, taking ownership. And they were talking with, you know, various young people teenagers and saying you know do you ever you know think that you might be um, you, you know on screens gaming too much for example you know gaming is a huge one we've not talked about that yet uh, and they go yeah yeah sure well, well how do you know that's uh, so when your eyes start to hurt oh so what, you know, what what do you do when when your eyes start to hurt and apparently without hesitation one of the guys said oh i just you know have eye drops next to me and I just put eye drops in and then I'm good to go. And you kind of go, oh, that's mad. That's completely mad. You you found a solution to the symptom, but you haven't found a solution to the actual problem, which is you're not designed to sit and stare at a screen for hours on end. Um, and even though that's such an, you know, gaming is, I think, basically the one of the biggest online um, activities. And it, it dwarfs, you know, Hollywood and music industry all together, you know, all put together in terms of global revenue. Mm -hmm. And so probably lots of lots of people and it's not just young people, you know, I don't know the average age of the gamer, but for a long time, it's sort of been around that 30 mark that a lot of people would say, yeah, that's my hobby. I, I love online games. That's where my social community is. And and it is, it's engaged because I'm active. I'm pursuing, so I can develop skill because I can be a better skill skill player at this game and that game and, and everything. Um, so th that is a hobby, I, I think. Um, but I think one of the things we're hinting at here as well is there is a, a we're not just mental beings, are we? We, we are embodied and for me the hobbies that i've found the greatest satisfaction in but also the almost the greatest rejuvenation are when there is a mind element and a body element mm -hmm. so for example since the beginning of this year i've retaken up pottery and starting going to a weekend pottery class and that's sort of three hours on a saturday morning and last weekend i actually did an afternoon as well so i was there for like six hours um and on the one hand i like from a body perspective probably not great because like hunched over this wheel for like five hours of you know <laughs> of the day but actually i came away like a little bit dehydrated but massively just like encouraged really excited i my i was relaxed because i'd been totally engaged and i had definitely entered into that flow state mm. the other advantage as well of being there for me massive extrovert is there's a group element so mm. i think i would enjoy it if i had my own studio but not as to the same extent. And it's really interesting to know that in that same class I'm part of, there are some people that have been putting for a you know, number of years. They have a studio at home. They have all of the stuff, kiln, wheel, and everything. But they're still part of this Saturday class. Why? It's the social element. I think we are never going to get away from that social element. And whilst I, I can envision a space where you might go, hey, let's all get on our pot, potting wheels and Zoom together or whatever, some kind of you know, vid video calling, that would that just is not the same and everybody who's lived through the pandemic would just knows yet yeah, this is great it's beautiful because we can connect in ways that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise but it does not match up to the face-to-face -face thing mm. and that's again going back to i i think <laughs> the the scary thing is that there's lots of people uh, the younger generation who prefer this it feels safer mm -hmm. and so aren't going to take that step out of the comfort zone into the real in in real life space and enjoy the added benefit of 
just the beautifulness of this is a face-to-face -face connection this is an in-person you don't have the, the screen effect you don't have you know mm. so i mean i suppose it's interesting because we're, we're talking about hobbies and what they are and obviously it, it, it feels like it, sometimes it's a bit diverse or um even contrary but just this idea that it's something you do for fun but one potential title we were going to have for this episode was our hobbies a waste of time or a distraction mm. and and i suppose that's interesting isn't it because like you said we, we're it's all about making it count that's the name of our podcast or making what count making our life count and many people would see that as a professional or as a career yeah. thing like you know making every moment like purposeful to our direction and i suppose like we ended last episode what is the life you want to live who is the sort of person you want to become but also, I, I came across this guy, um, Josh Whiteskin. I don't know how to say his name. Anyway, he was like a child prodigy, like grandmaster in chess. Mm -hmm. And then he was like Tai Chi world champion two times. And then he's gone and got the jujitsu black belt or something with some former like greatest thing. And they were saying, well, what does he do? to to learn and to get because basically what he does is he does something for like 10 years and then goes right i've become the master of that i'm going to go become a complete novice at something else and go through his levels wow. and one of the things he talks about was that in order to be intensely on on at a 10 out of 10 level you also need to know how to be intensely off at a zero out of 10 level you know to relax and recover and and i think that's one of the key places that hobbies play and, and when you hear about marathon runners or high level athletes, like 80 percent of their training is at a low intensity level, mm. They're building the groundwork. But that so that and, and actually, I think it was. Um, Eloy Chip Choge, I never know how to say his name, but yes. he basically Chip says oh, that's the one he goes, I never train higher than 80 percent. Right. You know, and it's just this idea of like, well, we think to be high performance, to make every moment count is to always be on. Mm -hmm. But actually, the best are going, yeah, you got to be on when you're on. You go on really be on. But also, you need to be really off so that you can be really on. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it's just interesting as just the last part of this conversation, maybe as we wrap up in a minute. But I saw some stuff about when it, like, it was a counseling website. It was like, when is a hobby a bad thing? And then they said, well, obviously, there are some things, illegal things, uh, <laughs> addictions, those sorts of things. Um, but I wonder, when you hear that, when is a hobby a bad thing? What's your first thought? I think I would go to that title that we may or may not call this. You know, our hobby is just a distraction. I just like that framework that you know, from Indistractable, Nir Eyal's book what is it that you're seeking traction towards mm. so a a hobby can be a distraction if you are you you're basically you're using it as a procrastination tool or as a filler or counterfeit for i actually want to be and should be moving towards that but that feels difficult so i'm going to go and do this thing mm -hmm. uh because that i find that enjoyable and it's going to just alleviate the immediate pain of i'm not getting where i want to get and so that's when it's a bad thing when we're when we're not really setting that side a time that time aside to go I, i'm really going to enjoy this because you can enjoy it for the time but i think the subconscious doesn't let you go you know that you're putting something off and so it's not as enjoyable as if it was you know what i've finished that task i was going to do and now i'm going to enjoy this fully in that knowledge of there's nothing else uh, that's calling on me. There's nothing else that I need to be doing right now. I can enjoy this and be fully here. And maybe that is fully off. And I think, I think that's touched on one of them. Yeah. They said, basically when it's your only coping mechanism for stress, <laughs> like, oh, that was quite interesting way of putting it. And then some of the other ones were when you're doing that instead of eating or sleeping or, you know, and that sure. ties into the video game stuff. It's like, Oh, they've literally their self care they're looking after themselves has taken a sideline to the video game now yeah. that's probably not a healthy thing and then the other one was just it's really obvious but like yeah. when you're spending beyond your means to sustain this hobby you know if you're yeah. putting yourself in financial issues because of this then yeah. it's probably not a right hobby for you because and then even the one i suppose it was most that i hadn't really thought about but when your hobby is leading to 
yours or other people's emotional or physical pain. And that's like, well, how often do we really think about that? But it's like, yeah, if I, if me doing this causes you pain, it's probably yeah. not a great hobby, is it? You know, it's yeah. like, actually, it's, it's maybe not healthy. It might be helping me unwind in some way, but it's bringing tension into relationship. And, and you know, that that's a key thing to be aware of. So to sum up, Matt, what would you say as we round up? Got to have a hobby. <laughs> you don't have to have a hobby. Hobbies, I think, can be just a really wonderful thing. You know, something that you do intentionally for enjoyment. And the the best of them, they also manage to connect you to other people. And I think, again, that ties into some of our common themes, connection with people, tying to a greater meaning, but also just enjoying and, and living life, not not defining success or making it count by this narrow it's got to be career or it's got to be that you know there that you can be a multifaceted person so yeah. it's for enjoyment but but i think that last bit how am i knowing i'm not just sort of distracting myself well ask some of these questions what's the true cost we didn't really talk about this but we all easily think about money and then time top, the time cost but what are the space the emotional relational physical maybe spiritual costs involved in if you pursue this hobby so Ask some of those questions and you'll get some yeah you'll get some great insights yeah and i'll sum up you know our hobbies just a distraction it depends and thank you for joining us for <laughs> this week's episode of the make it count podcast we always love that you tune in send us your questions and insights on what you think a hobby is or isn't that's all that would be interesting for us to hear what did we miss i think there was more that could be said around this definitely um, but Indeed. until next week thank you for joining us